Great. So let's start with our fourth model for today, which is called the softmax regression. Um, so far, what we have seen is how we can solve classification problem with two classes, with one perceptron. And now with the softmax regression, we'll be able to address the problem of classifying between different classes. So you see it's just one more layer uh, that we can put on, on top of uh, different perceptions. So let's start by sharing the screen. Yeah, I think you got it. Cool. So first, acknowledgments to Santiago Pascual and Kevin McGuinness. So what you have seen uh, so far is that uh, the, the perception is architecture that allows to naturally handle the logistic regression problems by using a sigmoid activation function. And then later on top, we can solve binary classification problems by setting a threshold on the output. So the output, if this is a sigmoid, the output will go between zero and one and by setting a threshold. Uh, decision threshold, we can decide between class zero or class two. But in general, we will we will be interested in dealing with more than two classes. We'll not be interested in just cats and dogs, but maybe we also want to distinguish between horses or birds. So, question for you: How do you think that we can address the problem of how could we adapt this uh, scheme of logistic regression to a problem than more than two classes? How can we deal with that? It's an open question for you. I think it's important that maybe uh, to give you some hints on that, that you remember, okay, so you remember on the first lecture, I think I show a, a figure in which I explain how we, we could encode multiple classes, how, which kind of representation can we, is it normally used when we have a, when we want to encode different classes. So I presented the regression problems, specification problems. Yeah, okay. So as some of you said in the chat, the representation is a one hot vector encoder, which will be like a vector that is as long as the number of different classes that we want to distinguish from. So now, how could we have, if, if we have, uh, we have perceptron or perceptrons, how could we use perceptrons to solve uh, n dimensional classification problem? When, so remember that each perceptron can have outputs between zero and, and one, and actually they are kind of designed, so perceptron with a, with a logistic regression, they are kind of designed to provide outputs between zero and one. That's what we are trying to force them. Yeah. So what we could do, as very well you say in the chat, is that we could use n perceptrons, one versus all, which what it means that we're going to have one perceptron for each class, and each of them will specialize in one class. We'll say, okay, this perceptron is specialized in cats, and it will distinguish between cats and all the rest. And this other one in dogs, and it will distinguish between the dogs and the rest. One on horses, one on birds. This is how we can deal with that. This is what you have in this uh, graph. So imagine that we take we take our images, that we unroll them, which means that uh, we just put all the pixels one next to the other, okay, and we have all the images of a fixed size, and now we fit uh, each of the pixels as the input of a multilayer percept. Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, this is the first. So this is our input layer. Sorry. This is going to be our input layer in which um, each dimension corresponds to a pixel because we are assuming. So this this is a very bad idea, okay, in terms of practice, but it's good to understand what we are doing. So we put all the pixels all together and uh, unrolled. So it's a fixed size. And now what we have is we have one perceptron here, this one or here maybe. It's looking at all the all the pixel in the image, and it's it's specialized in dogs. Okay, it's telling you, yeah, I think it's uh, you train it with dogs and not dogs. This other with cats and no cats, and then one perception for each class. If we do that, what uh, we could do at the end, because if, if we assume that we have a multi-class 
problem, which means that only one class we know ahead that only one class is present on that image. What we are going to do is uh, we look at all the outputs when we are doing infrared test time and just take a look at the maximum uh, logit, so the maximum output. Okay. Um, problem with the arc max operation. We have a problem with, so arc max means like choose the index with which is maximum, okay? So when you have uh, a vector with different values, uh, the arc max would say, okay, this is the position of, of the maximum value, which may indicate us which class uh, is present in the image. The problem of this operation is that it's not differentiable. And if we're trying to apply back propagation with an arc max operation there, that will not work. Okay, we will not be able to, to compute the, the derivatives or, or the gradients. So we'll need to do something that is not exactly the R max, but which is similar to that. What we are going to do is we're going to normalize the, the, the outputs of this uh, layer. Uh, so this output layer is just, uh, uh, it's having like one perceptron for each class, okay? So we're going to this like we're going to look at these values, and we're going to normalize them with something that's called a softmax function, and it's called softmax because it's it's trying to mimic the argmax uh, operation. So it's trying to 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 pick one of the values and pick the one that it's maximum. Let's see how how it does it. So the first thing that it does is that. Uh, on the numerator, what it does, it's just going to uh, ex use the exponential operation to boost the higher logits compared to the to the to the other ones. So the the higher get, will get higher, okay, and the lower will get co lower comparatively. So we will just try to boost the maximum maximum effect. This is what we have the exponential on the numerator. On the other hand, the denominator we take the same exponentials, but now for all the dimensions. So it's just a normalization. It, we, what we are doing here just is a normalization factor so that all the sum of probabilities or confidences, they sum up to one, okay? Notice that here I'm talking about probabilities, but there is no probability uh, concept associated. So maybe I should call it confidence, okay? There's no Bayesian uh, concept of probability here, but it's but as they add up to one, you will, you might see quite often that people refer to them as probabilities. So visually, what are, is going to happen now? If we have these kind of values with some negative values, some values are higher than others. So remember, imagine that this is the prediction for the output. The output of the of the logit for uh, for cat, for dog, for horse, okay, for bird, whatever, okay. When we go through the softmax layer, so this exponential and, and normalization, what we're going to do is like look that the highest value, it gets much higher. Low values, they become really, really low. All negative values become positive, even if very low, okay? And in the end, it's kind of, it's a way of saying, yeah, okay, I'm going to pick and keep the maximum value. What, that's what the softmax layer does. And it makes sense to use it when we know that we are solving a task in which only one class is possible. Okay, later uh, soon you have a lecture on loss functions that would tell you, okay, if I have the this output of the softmax, there's some loss function that which which that also assumes that only one class is possible, and this loss function works really well if you have this layer. That's why also I'm introducing this one layer here. So now with um, with the softmax layer, we could actually, in, in the end, classify between any number of classes, and also between two classes. Okay, so I know that the, that the case of two classes, it was already solved with a logistic regression and a classification threshold, but also keep into account that it's also possible to uh, solve it with two perceptions, one for each class. Okay, if you want to, to predict between cats and dogs, you can have one perception and set a threshold between for cats and dogs, or we can you, know, you can have two perceptrons, one specialized in cats, and that's this one of one against all uh, classification, one specialized in dogs, one against all against all, and then fit into a softmax max into a softmax layer. 
if you have three classes, you just keep adding uh, output neurons and computing and using the soft math, which in the end it's going to normalize all the outputs so that the so that the output is as similar as possible to the one hot vector encoding that I presented on on the first lecture. Um, this graphical representation, in general, you will often see it uh, depicted as with matrices. Okay, so here you have uh, this uh, the linear combination of the inputs and the weights, the softmax and the output, one for each class. And later, if if you just organize a bit more the values, you you find this uh, mathematical notation. That might be useful and in some case for you if you want to to describe this layer this softmax layer if you want to implement that in pytorch there's also a, a layer there that's called logs of max that you can if you combine a linear layer with logs of max you will have the uh, what 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 we were uh requesting okay what we were considering just notice that in in this case um there's no sigmoid we just put the linear in the logs of max because the sigmoid doesn't make sense here the the logs of max will will take care of of everything this this layer will, will do all the all the process if you are very interested in softmax actually there are other options for which are alternative to uh the softmax but i think it's too much in detail for the goal of this course, but if you are interested, you can look at this uh, PDF that I link here. So this will be the end. Um,